record midway through the album it started to take on this like space cowboy rock a little bit and Al Maria was the city where they filmed all the early spaghetti westerns like The Good, Bad and the Ugly and Fistful of the Dollars, all the early Eastwood stuff. And it just sounded different and when you see that title it's it's intriguing. So we figured that it definitely would match the, the sound of the record. This is our sixth album and we've been doing this for over a decade now so I think that the, the main objective was to just go into the studio and use the studio instead of just a recording device as more of, of a blank canvas and use all of the, the instruments as colors and sounds and textures and kind of just get away from two guitars, bass, drums, write the song, do pre-production, go in and uh, record the song and so I think the main fight was to kind of hold on to that spark that you had in the beginning when you were a teenager that picked up that guitar for the first time and that sense of awe and wonder that you would have when you'd go into the studio where anything could happen it was just kind of magical you know I think that over the years that kind of fades a little bit you know so this was our journey to kind of get back to that inspiring uh, spark that that we had in the in the beginning no, The song that actually took the longest was the single Between the Raindrops that uh, Natasha Bedingfield is featured on. That one in particular took about three and a half months to write. It was very much like writing Hanging by a Moment in a sense where I heard an idea in my head and I just had to throw it down on, on tape and just, I, I didn't have time to think about it so I was just throwing like uh, Wurlitzers down and banjos and high string electric Nashville tuning guitars and just all these different sounds that shouldn't really coexist together and then I just kind of left it you know and uh, that's when the rewriting process started and it was kind of a struggle to finish it took about three and a half months and then all the guys came in and produced their instruments on on top of the track that I made which was kind of interesting usually we all kind of track it together so and I, I just think that was part of the process just throwing all the rules out the window and just jumping on any inspired moment as it happened Knowing that together everything that's in our way. No one really got into this to be rock stars, I don't think. I think that we just loved music. For me personally, I, uh, I just started writing songs in, in my bedroom, you know, and uh, I never had any ambitions of doing anything with it. And it wasn't until I played a couple songs for some friends where they convinced me to go and play a couple coffee shops and I met a producer at the right time. So for me, it was more about just kind of documenting what I was going through in my teenage years and it had nothing to do with the pursuit of anything else, you know? So kind of falling into it was definitely interesting. Got to Me Tonight was uh, the track that um, Jason wrote later on in the in the, the record making process, and it's a song that that speaks to us in volumes because the, the catchphrase of the chorus of the song is uh, you "keep got to keep your head calm and carry on." And it wound up being the first track off the new record, and uh, we love that tune. Gotta keep your head up and move along, move along. Gotta keep your head calm and carry on, carry on. We've always strived to be a band that can just get on stage and play with live instruments and make it, you know, hope that you make it sound better and bigger than the, than the recordings. But, you know, when we started, we, I think we thought we sounded good and we didn't really sound that good. And over the years, we've, we've been pretty diligent at making sure that when people leave our shows that they, they go, wow, that, that was a good live band. I think the Philippines was really exciting for us because we actually, as a band, had no idea that we had fans in the Philippines. 
let alone an arena full of them. So, I mean, playing live is what we love to do the most. It's it's uh, something we thrive on, something we really enjoy. And to get to travel the world and see different cultures that are completely different to our way of life, connecting with songs that we play together is a pretty amazing thing, especially when you have no idea that you even have a fan base over there. And we showed up in the Philippines and it was, it was kind of chaos actually, and it was, it was really fun. And the show was one of my favorite shows I've ever played. You know, I'm, I'm actually really excited to go back to the Philippines. I think uh, my favorite part about this album is that every song is kind of different and its own little islands, you know, and I think that was kind of a freeing experience knowing that when you go into an album you don't always have to kind of have a concept you know or making a concept record all of your different influences can kind of coalesce together and then that's when the album really kind of takes on its own journey you know so there are threads of the spaghetti western uh, kind of thread sonically but lyrically each song is kind of its own story you know and uh, I would say it's a really uplifting record you know there's not a whole lot of breakup songs it's really just kind of a, about a life and, and journey and, and uh, freedom it's gotta be tonight.